Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Where in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create and use a UI scroll view within the Objective-C language. Now already on the simulator, an example of what we're going to be creating today. We have our view here and we have a label. Now the reason the label is on the screen is to indicate uh, once we start scrolling. So this label is placed within inside our scroll view. So we can click and interact with it and slide it up and down. And as you can see, as we scroll the scroller up and down, you can see the label starts to move. You can also see on the right hand side, there's an indication of our scroller with how much scroll it's got left to go and where it is in its current position. Now this can be different from the previous um, UI scroll tutorials we've done in the past as this will work on all screen sizes no matter whether it's on your iPad or your iPhone it's going to be created and run on all devices. So already in my project set up it's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it scroll views objective C for the purpose of this tutorial. Now the first thing you want to want to do is create our interface to add in our um, scroll view and our label. So we head over to our main.storyboard and I'm just going to change the size of the view to an iPhone screen. Okay, there we go. Right then, so creating scroll views is quite hard in terms of making it work on all individual screen sizes if you're only using one interface. But there's a quite simple way around it and how you can get it to work. And how we do that is not place the scroll view in the view, we place the scroll view within a content view in the view. Now that sounds a little bit confusing, so what we need to do is add a content view into our view. Now you may be thinking we don't have content views as objects and you will be correct. So what we're going to do is use a simple view, I'll just simply find it now, and we simply say that to ourselves, it's hard content view. But we're just going to drag and drop a view in, so we have a view within the view, and we're going to call this our content view. We're then going to add to our constraints, and we're going to pin this view to our UI view controller, and add those four constraints in. Now, once we've done that, that view will now resize itself to our UI view controller. So by adding our UI scroll view within the content view, um, it will resize itself because when it's not in the content view and it's on the view control itself it can cause some kind of conflictions and it doesn't really pin itself well to the view as a whole. So then all we need to do now is to simply go find our scroll view, there it is, and we're going to drag and drop it in our content view and this time this is simply going to add the missing constraints so it pins itself to the content view which will resize depending on what screen size we're going to be working on. We're then going to get a label and we're going to place that in the center so we can see the indication of the scroll view working. I'll just simply space that out. And it's also a way of showing you how to add objects to our scroll view. Now, make sure you select down the label and again I'm going to add the missing constraint so it remains in the center of the screen no matter uh, what screen size we're working on. Okay, then, so now once we've done that, we need to add in an, an outlet for our scroll view so we can refer back to it and tell it basically how far we would like it to be scrolling. So I'm going to bring up the assistant editor here and make sure you select it on the view controller.h. And then we're going to simply click over here. I'm not going to click from the view just in case it selects our content view. Uh, right click or control click and drag over our scroll view and drop it in. And we can simply name it something like scroller and add that in. Now the reason that I didn't do it in terms of creating it in the outlet section is because I want the non-atomic strong function on um, as a property of our scroller. Okay, then. so now we've done that then we can close up our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor and then jump into our viewcontroller.m where we can now begin to start coding it. Okay, then. so what we want to do then is um, kind of set up our scroller. We want to basically have it um, scroll at a fixed certain point. Now there's two ways we need to do this. We need, first need to set up a view layout, um, view did layout subviews. This means um, it kind of, no matter what happens, if you're using subviews in your application, uh, our um, scroll view can handle it and work with it. And then we need to place another piece of code within the view did appear. We're not going to be using the view did load because we want um, our scroll view to be activated in a sense when the view appears, not when it's loaded, as it won't work. 
So we're going to start with first by placing out these statements. So we do dash bracket void. And I'll put in view uh, did appear, which is just at the top there. We'll create our parentheses and press enter. And the second one we're going to want to use is dash bracket void view did um, view did where is it there it is view did layout sub views create our parentheses there now these void statements are not actions these get performed when called upon okay now. so the first we need to do then in our view did layout sub views is add in the super view did layout sub views very much like how we have in our view did load so I'll quickly add that in so um, bracket super um, view did layout sub views there we go and there a bracket and a semicolon and now we're going to get our bracket self dot scroller, making sure we got an F on this self there. So self dot scroller, we're going to set the content size. There we go to our CG size. CG size there make. There we go. And in the two floats now is the size of we want our scroller. So if we set the width to be zero, which means it won't size the scroller to be zero size in pixels, it's talking about where it basically is scrolling. So if we set it to zero, as we only want the scroller to go up and down, we're gonna set it to zero so it can't go left to right. In the height, we're gonna set something quite um, bigger than the screen size itself. So I've set that to a thousand pixels, meaning that the scroll view will be a thousand pixels in size. So it will scroll itself to basically fit it all in. And we end that with the two brackets there and a semicolon. So that's we basically told that's what we want our um, scroller to be like. But within the view did appear, we need to then allow it to do that. So again, we do bracket self dot scroller. Uh, set scroll enabled and we're going to have yes now the reason we want to set it enabled is because basically we do want it to scroll so we simply say yes the scroller can scroll and we've enabled it and then we repeat the process again by doing self dot scroller space set content size and we're going to repeat the process again so cg size make and we do 0 100 1000 sorry there we go and that would two brackets and send me colon so even though we set it up for our sub views so no matter what's going to go on it's going to be the same size once the view will appear now we don't do it in the view did load as it can cause conf um, conflictions and it won't work so we do it in the view did appear so if it did appear if it does appear then it's going to enable our scroll view and we'll allow it to scroll by a thousand pixels in terms of height okay and so once you've done that then we can go to build and run and test it out so then once it's loaded up on the simulator, we see we've got our view here of our label. And then once we interact with the screen and start scrolling up and down, you can see that our label now moves up and down because we've set it to scroll by a thousand pixels. So you can see it on the right hand side, you've got our indicator working there. And it perfectly resizes itself as we created it in the iPhone 4 um, interface. This is the iPhone 6 simulator. And you can see that it works perfectly with our constraints all linked up with inside our content view. So I hope this helps in any of your apps or programs at the moment. And uh, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.